All right. Today I want to talk about equivalent fractions, but using some real-world models. And I'm going to start with this gorgeous pepperoni pizza. Um, makes me very hungry. It's about dinner time here. Um, so we talked about equivalent fractions before. We talked about the numerator and denominator. The numerator being the top and the denominator being the bottom. We found that when we go for from one fraction, for instance, one half to another fraction of, let's say, something over 12, we know that when we change from one fraction to another, if we're talking about equivalent fractions, that we have to multiply by the same thing on both the bottom and the top. So for instance, we know one half equals six twelfths because two times six equals 12. So we have to do times six on the top. One times six is six on the top. And the reason we have to do the same thing on the bottom and the top is because six over six actually equals one. So we're actually taking one half times one and it should equal one half. And so six twelfths does, uh, it does equal one half. So today I kind of want to use that same concept uh, and use that with our little pizza model here. So let me get rid of all this scratch over here to the right. We're going to start with this pizza and let's make up a little problem. Let's say we're having a party tonight and we want to cut this pizza up so we can evenly divvy it out to some people and I decide first things first I'm going to cut it in half. Okay, and That's close to a half and did notice one size a little bit bigger, but that's okay. So right now we have a half, and let's say, um, obviously we don't want to feed a half to people, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it into fourths. I still see that's pretty big, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and cut it into eighths. And that kind of looks like slices that I'd, I would get when I order my pizza. So right now I have eight slices. And then let's say, here's a problem for you. Let's say that of my eight slices, my sister comes over, Rebecca. She eats a lot, not really. She comes in and she eats two pieces. So let's take away our two pieces. My little racing here. So she munches away two slices of pizza. I'll do my best to keep our little lines there so we remember that they were there. There you go here. We'll just do it the easy way and redraw our lines. So she came and she ate two eighths of my pizza. She ate two slices out of eight which would represent, I just kind of cheated for you, which would re represent 2 out of 8. So she ate 2 out of 8, at 2 out of 8 slices, which would mean that how many are left over? So let me think, let's think about that just for a second. How many are left over? So if we go back and count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that means 6 out of 8 are left over. So you notice the same problem we can pull two different types of information from. I can do two eighths, she ate two eighths of my pizza, or I can say there's six eighths of the pizza left over. Now let's say, okay, some more people come and we're like, well, maybe an eight isn't really what we want. Maybe we need to do smaller slices so we get more bang for our buck. So we're going to cut our eights in half. Well, we're going to cut our eights in half as close as I can get them anyway. We're going to make believe Mr. Leatherwood's cutting these right in half. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my slices up here in half too. Okay. We're going to make believe that these are the exact same size. So let's go back and now try to figure out how many slices of pizza we have. So I'm going to go back and count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. You'll notice I counted those pieces of pizza that Rebecca came and ate. Because remember, we want our whole to stay the same. We want our, 
we still want the whole pizza to be our numerator on the bottom. Or excuse me, the denominator on the bottom. So I could say, let me change colors real quick. We no longer have eight slices. Now our whole is 16 slices. And that's going to be the same down here also. Now our whole is 16 slices. So I could go back and ask you, okay, now that we have 16 slices, how many slices did Rebecca eat? And you can say, well, she ate two eights beginning. So we know that however I got from 8 to 16, I need to do on the top also. Because I want that, that number 1. So 8 times 2 is going to be 16. And 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. So Rebecca ate 4 sixteenths of my pizza. We could also say, well, how many pieces or how many slices are left over? And so same thing. I did 8 times 2 to get to 16. So I'm going to do the same thing on the top. 6 times 2 gives me 12. So I know that 12 sixteenths is left over. Okay, so you can see how we can use the same model multiple ways and equivalent fractions really comes in handy to figure that out. Let's look at a different model. Now our pizza model, you can do a bunch of different things with this. So draw your own little lines uh, while you're watching the video. See if you can come up with different equivalent fractions. What if I cut all these 16 little slices in half? Or maybe I decided to um, cut those in half and make little slivers. Okay, try to find equivalent fractions um, to our 6 eighths and our 12 sixteenths, or to our 2 eighths and our 4 sixteenths, and see how you do. Uh, Google some different pictures of food and see if you can do the same thing to extend what you've learned. Uh, practice, practice, practice. That's the only way you're going to get better at this math. All right, thanks for watching. Now, we've had our pizza, now it's time for dessert. I am a huge brownie fan, so I have a picture of brownies here. And Rebecca is still at my party, but we won't bug her anymore. We'll bug my other sister, Emily. Emily comes in and says, okay, let's cut up these brownies because I'm ready for dessert. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and cut up our brownies. Let's see. Go ahead and cut them in half. Maybe I decide to cut those in half. So, so far, if you count, it looks like I have fourths. But I don't want to give people that much. I'm hoping that they don't eat that much so I can have some leftovers. So I'm going to cut all those sections in half. I don't know if you've ever tried to get brownies out of a pan, but if you tried to pull strips out like this, it's not going to happen too well. So I'm going to go ahead and cut along the center, and then maybe I decide to cut those in half. So I think those are good-sized brownies. I think I can justify giving those away. Uh, let's see how many we have. Let's figure out our denominator, our whole. Our denominator is going to be the whole object. Okay, so I'm just going to go back and count real quick. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So my denominator this time will be 32. My whole is going to be 32 parts. Okay. Those of you that are really good with arrays probably saw that we could have done 8, 8 over here times our 4 right here and gotten our answer. So now that we know that our whole is 32, let's talk about eating some of these brownies. Okay. Um, let's say we ate, let's see how this works, we'll use black to black them out. Let's say we, we ate this brownie here, or here, let's, let's do gray since the pan is gray. So we ate this brownie here, this one here. So a lot of people are eating my brownies. I'm a little disappointed because I'm not going to have leftovers. OK. 
Okay, eating a whole row of my brownies. Not cool, dude. All right, so they've eaten a whole row. So if we were to say, if I was to ask you, how many did they eat? Why don't you pause it and see if you can figure out the fractional part of how many brownies they ate using the denominator of 32. So go ahead and do that. Okay, you should have figured out that they have eaten 8 out of 32. Okay, so one of the questions that I may pros, uh, propose to you is, now that we know that it's 8 over 32, what if I want to go backwards to a lower denominator? Earlier we were multiplying to go from, for instance, something out of 4 to 8 over 32. Now, how about if we're going backwards? We want to go from the 32 back to figure out what our numerator is on the top. Any ideas? Have you talked amongst yourselves? Well, what I would do, anytime I'm going from 32, a bigger number, to a smaller number, or at least in this case, I'm going to divide by something. Okay, I'm not going to multiply. I'm going to do the opposite, the inverse operation. and I'm going to divide. So 32 divided by something is going to be 4. Anybody know what that is? Well, I do. 32 divided by 8 is going to give me 4. So I'm going to divide by the same thing on the top. Because remember, we want that 1. 8 over 8 is going to be 1. 8 divided by 8 is going to be 1. So my lovely guests, who I'm not very happy are doing this, but they've eaten one-fourth of my brownie. Okay. So let's make it a little trickier problem. Let's say that's already eaten. Okay, that Those brownies are eaten. So we're going to take that problem away. We have our hole down there. 32 is our hole, right? The denominator is our hole. And then some people come in, they start eating some more. But the Leatherwood family aren't always the cleanest, so they're just kind of sticking their spatula in there. Or, you know, my little sister Emily maybe sticking her hand in there. My stepdad maybe putting his face in there. You never really know. Okay, so we're eating some random brownies here, not in any particular order. Again, not very happy. Okay, maybe they'll eat this one here. All right, so now if I ask you, how many brownies did they eat? I want you to find out how many brownies were eaten in this case. So go ahead and take a second, see if you can pause the video, and figure out how many brownies were eaten out of our hole. Remember, our hole is going to be the denominator of 32. Let's go ahead and try to figure that out. Okay, we had our initial eight up here at the top, and I think if we count the rest, one, two, three, four, five, five, six. And eight plus six, if I'm correct, is 14. So they have eaten 14 out of 32 brownies. Again, not very happy about this. 14 out of 32 brownies. So then I say, okay, this is not cool. They've eaten 14 out of 32 brownies. I'm going to cut these up into smaller brownies, so hopefully they will start eating less, or at least it'll look like it's less. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to cut our sections in half, make smaller pieces. And notice I'm going to go ahead and cut and half what we've already eaten so we can make our model exactly the same all the way throughout. Now if you would, go ahead and check and see how many little pieces of brownie we have now. Go ahead and pause and do that. Double check me, but if I counted right, I think I have 64 pieces. 64 brownie pieces that they can eat. Okay. So again, we know that we started with 32 as our whole, and now we have 64 as our whole. Our denominator is always going to be our whole. What would be an equivalent fraction to 14 over 32? 14 30 seconds. Well, I can see to go from 32 to 64, it's a bigger number, so I'm going to have to multiply. And I'm going to multiply by 2. 
So I'm going to have to do the same thing up here at the top because 2 over 2 is 1. 14 times 2 is going to be 28. So I know that they have eaten 28 of my little pieces out of 64. So I'll give you an example of how you can use equivalent fractions in the real world. Uh, we could also go to challenge yourself a little bit. Um, see how much was not eaten and see if you can figure out a few equivalent fractions for that. Go back to our pizza model real quick.